Hi folks, welcome to the channel. My name's Colin, call sign MM0 OPX. And in this video, I want to talk to you about some antenna development that I've been doing. Now, if you're not aware of what this is, this is an adjusty wave antenna that I, um, that I like to use. And in essence, it's simply a quarter wave vertical with a, a single um, quarter wave elevated radio, or you could use you could ground mount it and use ground radio. So quite quite simple, but it's it's variable length, so you can um, it works on a pulley system, so you can adjust the length on the fly. So you could work sort of any band from on this from eighty meters uh, eighty meters through to two uh, four meters uh, on this version. Um, so and it. You, after 40 meters, lower than 40 meters on a 12 meter spider beam pole, you can run, um, you could run 80 meters on it because you go all the way up across and back the way down again. So it makes a, a quite an efficient um, compact antenna for 80 meters. But, you know, I've been kind of late to the party looking at NFED half waves um, and I've been doing some modeling on MMANA and also looking at other some, uh, some videos on YouTube. And if you look at the elevation view, um, of um, of the far field pattern and you compare a quarter wave vertical to a half wave vertical you can see that the angle of radiation so what you're wanting for dx ideally is much lower on the half wave vertical i'll try and put some uh, some pictures on screen if i can here uh, showing the, uh, the the comparison um five degrees off the horizon i think there's about one db or one and a half db there's not a lot but up about 15 degrees i think there's actually there is a, there is a good bit difference so there maybe is an argument there to say well do i need do i want to use a half wave in fed half wave vertical or do i want to use a quarter wave vertical um but the beauty with obviously the end fed half wave is you don't need any radials but you do get you, you potentially could get other issues um uh, run higher power and um, so you've, you've got to bear that in mind so this box is typically pretty empty um, so what I want what I want to do is was actually fit a uh, 4921 anon inside of it. But not only that, because I didn't want to just use it as an end fed half wave, I also wanted to keep the functionality of a quarter wave vertical. So what I've actually done is I've actually installed a switch. So what this switch will do is it actually switches between the 4921 auto transformer and um there's a bypass wire in there that just lets the antenna work as a quarter wave vertical. So quite simple. It's not a new it's not a new idea. And um, when I thought about this, I thought, oh, nobody's done this before. But when I've done some research, it, it's quite common. And I recently found one of Steve Ellington's videos. So he runs, I think he runs a an end fed half wave for 80 meters, but then he switches it. He does it rem remotely with a relay, which would actually be quite simple to do like this. It wouldn't be an issue. He and he he um remotely changes it so he's um half wave end fed on 80 meters then becomes a quarter wave on 160 so it's quite a neat trick um my plan what my plan to do is is run um so 10 meters of wire which is a half wave on 20 meters and then that would double for a quarter wave on 40. now i'm going to use the uh, adjustable radio because i need that for 40 meters and what that will do is that will then act for, act as a counterpoise, whether it's needed or not. We can get, you know, that's for other people to debate. So that acts as a counterpoise when it's in NFED half wave mode. So, um, you know, if I'm, you know, it just, it just gives me a bit more flexibility. So say perhaps I'm, um, I'm working the grey line and I want to work in the morning or evening, doesn't matter. And I want to, you know, flick between bands. I can do this just at a flick of a switch. Um, I could do this with a fan vertical, and I have done it. Um, not a problem to do that, but um, the the, tw the twenty meter would just be a quarter wave. So I'm just looking for that little bit of advantage using the end fed half wave, and it may just may just give the uh, may just give the edge in whether you make the contact or not. So as I say, I've been wanting to play about with an end fed half wave for a while. Um, this has actually given me a chance to do that. Um, so. What we'll do first is we'll take a look inside this. Now that I've got the, uh, the cover off, we can actually have a look inside the box. Now, um, what we have here for the 49 to 1 um, transformer. So these are a uh, fair right um, FT240 43s. So two of those are stacked. They're actually super glued together. 
Um, we have an old wire. I'm not sure exactly what this wire is, um, but I had this actually lying around. Um, so that's just what I've used. I do have some slightly thicker stuff uh, if I want to make a bigger auto transformer. So two turns primary, and I think it was, uh, was it 16 turns total, 14. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 14 total, um, 14 total turns. So I've, as I said, I've followed um, Steve Ellington's design for that. Um, now, I did have one issue when I was testing this initially. I, I couldn't get my SWR was through the roof and it just didn't work at all. But the little error I made was um, these two wires here, I didn't scrape enough of the enamel off in between and there wasn't a connection between them. But once I did that, so that's a little tip. So make sure you scrape enough wire off between them so they, they can actually short out. So that's the 49 to 1. Now, power handling wise, I'm not going to be running 40 or 80 meters, so this should easily be good for um, on 20 meters, 400 watts um, CW, perhaps a bit more. Steve Ellington, I know he has um, three FT 240, uh, 240, 50, 52s, I believe, three of them. I could I could be wrong, but I think that's what he runs. He runs a stack of three. He runs cooling, but he's running big power on 80 meters. Um, and he says it's not not quite as critical on the on the higher bands. So I have this this red wire here. This red wire here is simply a bypass, and this is what it operates when it works in quarter wave uh, vertical mode. Um, and you can see I've got a switch here. Now this is the biggest switch I could actually find. It's not RF rated, um, but I think it's rated at something like 240 volts and 16 amps. Um, so I'm hoping that's going to be good enough. So obviously, and for the uh, 49 to 1, this is actually a 100 puff um, capacitor. I think this is 1 kV. Um, so there's, there are a lot of different uh, opinions how big this should be, but it's big enough for what I'm needing just now, but I probably will change that out at some point. So you can see the coax comes in, the centre core goes to the common, which is the middle. And then depending on which way you switch it, uh, switch way the RF flows first. Now you will get some backflow with the RF, um, I believe, but uh, you know the RF should take the easiest, the easiest route. So I'm hoping it should work okay. I have some done, some done some initial tests, um, and shown on a previous video, and this did look um, quite promising. So this is what I've actually done so far. Um, it's not particularly difficult. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm quite curious to how it's actually going to behave. And ultimately, I'd like to get this over salt water, and um, because that's really where a, a ver vertically polarized an antenna uh, uh, performs best. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this back together, um, and what I'll do is I'll take it out. I'll actually just put it, set it up on the 12 meter spider beam, and uh, we'll uh, we'll put the analyzer on it, and we'll see uh, we'll see how it is. Here we have things set up in the, the park just next to my house and it's actually looking better than it was when it was just set up in the garden and I think this is because I've actually got it out in the open and there's no interaction with my off centre fed uh, dipole which I have there so you can see the antenna you can see I've just got scribbled on there and um, if the switch is up it's sitting in quarter wave vertical mode and if it's down it's in end fed half wave uh, mode so we'll just go around the antenna give you a little overview I actually forgot my arm here, my linear loading arm, but I'm not actually linear loading, so it doesn't really matter because we're using the um, come out the sun. We're actually using the 12 meter spider beam pole minus the top section, so the antenna is not actually a linear loader, so it's just a straight vertical. So, yeah, 10 meter, approximately 10 meters of wire vertically, which is a half wave on 20 or a quarter wave on 40, and this uh, this radial that we have here, this actually acts as the radio for 40 meters and I'd imagine it also has some effect because it's not disconnected from the end fed half wave so it's acting as some sort of counterpoise so that just runs back to um, two electric fence poles through a couple of pulleys the, the distance is not critical you can see this is actually linear loaded ever so slightly as long as you keep that distance between the poles about a meter maybe a bit more you shouldn't have any issues remember the closer you have wires together the more you need to linear load So there we have here. Okay, and I think what we'll do now is we'll actually have a look at the uh, SWR curves. 
hopefully you can see this okay. So this is 40 meters. Um, so we're just going to see what the SWR sweeps like. So we're centered on 7.1 uh, plus or minus 192 kilohertz, and you can see that we're uh, we're well within the band, well within the band. Because if we go to the edge of band, and you, I mean, you could move this curve to wherever you want it, but it's not critical. You know, we're less than 1.5 across the whole of the band here in Europe, and you could probably set that up, center that a bit better if you were uh, in North America. So we'll have a look at the more complex components. So you can see the resistance is approximately 37 ohms and I believe that's absolutely perfect for a, a, a quarter wave vertical. And you look at the reactants, next to nothing for reactants, so that looks like a, a perfectly normal quarter wave vertical. Then what we'll go and do is we'll actually just flick the switch down into the end fed half wave position and we'll go back and change our frequency. And what we'll do is we'll set that on uh, 14175 for the end of the band, edge, it's sort of the middle of the band, and then we'll scan it. And there's hardly any SWR there. So that's plus or minus again 192 again. If I put the range up, plus or minus 384. Look at that. So an extremely good um, SWR on 20. And if we look at the more complex components. Here we go, 1.11 SWR, uh, resistance 45.3, and reactance 1.1 .1 ohm. So, you know, in both modes, both bands, it's a it's an extremely um, good match. Um, I can't stay too long today, I've got a lot of things to do today, but I have got the radio. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, plug the radio in and just have a quick quick listen on the bands. Mike, Mike, zero, Oscar, Papa, X-ray. Mike, Mike, uh, zero, Oscar, Papa, X-ray, good morning. Returning Italy to Romy, Oscar, Oscar. My name is Robert. I'm the QPH in North Italy, Varese. Little Alpha, Romeo, Echo, Sierra, Echo. North West from Milan. The microphone is on for you. My, my zero, Oscar, Papa, X-ray, India, two, Romy, Oscar, Oscar. India to Romeo Oscar Oscar find there Robert my name is Colin Charlie Oscar Lima Italy November name is Colin your report is 5 by 9 5 by 9 and I'm only running 5 watts 5 watts into an end end fed half wave vertical so very low power uh, simple working conditions and the QTH is close to the city of Edinburgh back to you there Robert from Mike Mike zero Oscar Papa X-ray India number two, Romeo Oscar Oscar. It's only five by six. Uh, five by six signal here. So well, folks, as you can see, it's starting to rain, so I'm actually going to make a make a sharp exit there. So at least we managed the QSO on 20 meters. So I think that was pretty good. I was five and six, running five watts, and uh, he was um, he was about five and seven. Real report, and he was running 600 watts. So I didn't show the setup there, so. I'd just like to show we have a patch lead coming from the antenna and we have running into this uh, GM3 SE GM3 SEK uh, choke so on an end fed half wave they, they recommend them to be um, 0 0.05 to 0 0.3 of a wavelength away from the feed point if you put this choke up at the feed point you'll get strange things happening as I've uh, experienced and from that there's just about 10 or 15 feet of RG8 Okay folks, so for me on the ham radio hound holly, it's uh, 73. Um, if you've got any comments, any questions, what do you think of the antenna? Um, I mean it's a bit quirky, you know I can understand that, um, it's maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but uh, it perhaps will give you the uh, the edge, um, you know, uh, when you need to make it, uh, need to make the antenna count. Alright, once again, 73, and we'll see you on the next video.